Hey guys and welcome back to my channel. So today's video is going to be all about Moo and her stomach fungus that she has had going on for the past two weeks. So as you may or may not know, I got a hamster on March 1st about two weeks ago and from the very first day that I got her, she was a very itchy little thing. There is a full story on how I got her and how I discovered that she had trichophyton, which is a fungus on her stomach that was causing her to be really, really itchy and loose fur on her little belly and legs. After seeing multiple vets, I realized that this was going to take about two weeks to clear up and luckily the test came back positive so I did know that she did have trichophyton which is like a strand of ringworm. And basically this entire video is going to be dedicated completely to how I healed her of this skin condition. So the very first thing that I want to say is a disclaimer for this video. I am not a doctor. I am not an expert in hamsters. This is the first hamster that I have had in over 10 years. But I am just making this video from my experience to help all of you if your hamster may be having a similar skin condition or issues with its skin. The vets are the ones who really helped her. I just doctored her at home and if you have a problem with your hamster, no matter what it is, even if it's not a skin condition, please see a vet because these little guys, they escalate very quickly with their illnesses and it can be a means of life or death with them. Okay, so right into Moo. So after we discovered that it was for sure trichophyton, we had already been treating her with an oral antifungal. We had stopped the topical antifungal that we were giving her called myconazole. I will write that right here. And we started her on an oral antifungal, which I will put right here. She responded so well to the oral antifungal and I am seeing great strides. Her itching has pretty much slowed down as of today. I haven't seen her scratch at all. I don't think I saw her scratch much yesterday at all, so I do know that it is working. I did stop the antibiotic, however, I do believe the antibiotic helped a lot with the redness and inflammation and things like that and I will put the name to her antibiotic right here. So those are the three main medicines that she was on. She did get an ivermectin shot. However, I do not believe that she ever had mites or anything like that. So technically the shot was kind of unneeded, but it was just to cover all of our bases because we really weren't sure what was wrong with her. So Moo is currently in a 20 gallon long aquarium. It is a 360 square inch aquarium and the doctor recommended that she be in a small enclosure even if that wasn't her normal tank, which for her, I've only had her two weeks. So that is the only tank I currently have for her. However, even if I did have a 40 gallon breeder tank, which I don't, I would have kept her in the 20 gallon anyway, just so that I can keep her in a more confined area so that I'm able to watch her 24 seven. When you have a hamster that is ill or has something wrong with it, it is very important to put it in a smaller enclosure. If you have something huge like that uh, giant bookshelf tank, or if you have like a 55 gallon or bigger, um, usually putting a sick or ill hamster in kind of a quarantine tank or a hospital tank is usually a better idea just so that you can constantly watch them, especially if it's a skin condition. You really wanna watch them 24 seven to monitor their behavior, to check if they're not eating, if they're not drinking, if they're not waking up and running at all at night, if they're lethargic or not being very energetic. You just want to monitor it for whatever problem your hamster could be having. Luckily with Moo, she didn't exhibit any symptoms of any other kind other than just scratching constantly. It was like every three minutes she would, while playing, she would stop and then she would just go crazy on her stomach and it was just terrifying. Her poor little belly was so raw. I will insert pictures here. I was worried that she was going to end up cutting her skin open because her nails are really long as well. Being as she is probably around four to five months old, I'm assuming, her nails were really long. They had never been cut and she had never been to the vet yet the first day I got her. So she was already scratching. I was really worried that it was going to get really bad. She has since got her nails cut, so that's not a problem anymore, as well as now the itching has finally stopped. I'm going to insert a picture here to show you her before and after of what her stomach looked like before treatment and two weeks after treatment. The photo that you see here somewhere on the screen is basically the first couple of days that I had her. This is how bad her stomach looked. And then the second photo beside it is what her stomach looks like currently. And as you can see, it is a thousand times better. So when I first took her to the vet, they did a skin scrape on her, which unfortunately takes between one to two weeks to get back the results. Her results came back pretty quickly because it was positive for trichophyton. All the vet had to do with the skin scrape that they took is allow it to grow in the petri dish and then they took it, put it on a sample slide, they stained it, and then they looked at it under a microscope and that's how they were able to positively identify that it was trichophyton. Some vets don't offer a stain of the organism that's growing in the petri dish so I would strongly suggest finding a vet that does if you think that your hamster could have a skin problem I would highly suggest getting one that can positively identify what it could be 
That way you know that you're treating it for the right disease and not something else that it isn't and then you're wasting precious time. Another thing that you can do if your hamster seems to be having a skin condition or an allergy is what I did. For the first week that I had her, I decided to eliminate certain things out of her habitat and her diet just to make sure that she wasn't allergic to anything in her enclosure. The first thing that I took out was obviously her bedding. I took out all of her Carefresh, which she was on the Confetti Carefresh. I took all of that out and I replaced it with paper towels, as you will see in the clips that I'm about to show you. The next thing that I did is I made her diet the most bland hamster diet in the world. I took away all of her peanuts, her cheese chew, I took away all of her chews, all of her wooden items that could possibly be splintering and touching her stomach. I mean, I just took every precaution that I could possibly think of that could be causing this. After eliminating everything out of her diet except for oxbow pellets and millet, literally the only two things I gave her for about five to seven days, I realized that the itching was not going away and that's when I knew that it was obviously something more. And I had already been to the vet twice, I think, in the first five days that I had her. So I knew that they were giving her medicine for whatever problem it could be, but just as a side thing, I just wanted to rule out it being an allergy altogether. If you have a hamster with a skin condition, you're going to want to take out that bedding anyway, just to be on the safe side that there isn't mites in the bedding or the dye in the bedding or anything like that. So now let's get right into the clips. All of these clips are going to be accumulation over the past two weeks of me treating her. It's going to show you the topical myconazole, which obviously did not work for Moo because she did not like it on her skin but I'm going to include those clips anyway in case it could be of use to you. If your hamster doesn't mind it, then that is a great topical antifungal to use. As well as me giving her all of her oral medicines, my trip to Georgia that I took with her, I've got kind of vlog style clips of all of that. So I want you guys to go on and watch that. Hopefully it helps you and I hope you enjoy. So this is the medicine that I am giving her and I just put it on a Q-tip and then I apply it to her infected area. Here's my baby. I know. So we're going to do this as quickly as possible. Okay, let's just pick you up. Put it on there. Good girl, good girl, good girl. Good girl, good girl, good girl. See, she's not biting. Good girl. Alright, let's do it one last time. Really good, really good, really good, really good. Alright. And that's pretty much it. And I'm going to put her back so I don't stress her out. It's back in there and it's completely done and that's basically all that I do to treat her ringworm. Well, as you can see her tank is completely empty and I'm going through and cleaning it out. This is living with a hamster that has ringworm. Um, I wasn't going to clean her cage out tonight. All I did was take all of the infected bedding and I have a trash can full of her stuff which I scooped out with this which I'm going to be steaming and cleaning after I'm done. Um, I had to spray this down with vinegar water. I actually used a uh, disinfectant in there as well and now I'm going through with wet paper towels and completely drying it perfectly and then I'm going to flip it over when I'm done and I'm going to use wet rags on the outside as well. Wiping down the outside really really good with a soaking wet hot rag. And then I'm going to do the inside again just because I'm really paranoid. And it's going to be completely ringworm germ free. I put down some paper towels in the bottom just because I felt like it, you know, just another barrier between the glass, you know. And I'm putting in some Carefresh um, bedding, the really pretty rainbow one, but it is unscented. And the vet said that it was fine for her skin condition that she has. So I have finished cleaning, microwaving, washing off with hot water, everything in here. The only two items that I have not replaced yet are the alligator chew and her cheese chew. Those two things I'm going to probably swap out Wednesday or Thursday. Sorry, you go ahead. It's all clean here. You can burrow wherever you want to go. Okay guys, that is it for how to clean the tank spotless. It's so important when you have a hamster that has ringworm like little Moo here does. Um, the vet said I didn't have to clean it for five to eight days um, because her medicine technically hasn't taken effect yet. But even though this is the first day giving her her medicine, I truly did not want her sleeping in bedding that she had already been you know, getting infected for three days. Alright guys, this is day two 
um, the third time putting it on her today. I didn't film the first two, um, so it's right before bed, and I have some millet here as a treat because I feel bad she's had to do those three times today. I also have a couple of other treats, just a pumpkin seed and some oatmeal, um, just in case she kind of, you know, has had it, but she's been really good. She's been such a trooper, and I think she's going to do okay, so I'm just going to get her out right now. Let's put your medicine on. So we're going to flip her over just like this, and we're going to apply it to the infected area on her belly. You're okay. It's okay. Good girl. Let's get a little bit more. But okay, guys, that is how you apply the medicine for the third time today. Um, I hope that helped you guys a little bit on how you can apply the medicine, and hopefully that your hamster doesn't fight it. Um, she doesn't fight it too bad. She doesn't bite or anything, but we're just trying to cure this ringworm, and I have faith that it will work. I'm just hoping that it works soon because I just hate the thought of her, you know, having anything wrong with her, um, as far as that goes. You know, I hate it. I hate that. Put our little treats in there since she's smelling around. You're a good girl. You're a good girl. Yeah. Thanks, guys. Hey guys, so I just wanted to do a quick update um, on my hamster and her skin irritation. So Moo still has her stomach um, infection or whatever. Um, she's still itching and scratching it constantly. Um, I phoned my vet, well every day this week, but today's Tuesday and um, I took her to the vet on Saturday. I've been putting the medicine on her now since Saturday. It's Tuesday, so three days. And she gets it two to three times a day. I've been doing it morning and night for the past two days and the first two days I did it three times a day. Just sitting here watching her cage because it's literally all I do now. I just sit and watch her tank and watch her sleep pretty much even though I can't even see her. She's buried in all of the tissue paper towels like shredded paper towels this is like one full ro row of like paper cheap paper towels and it doesn't have any dust in it um, it's really clean actually it's just a cheap paper towel and then of course I put the rolls in there because she loves toilet paper rolls and things like that um, I also took out her wooden crawl through hide which is back there because I was like what if the shards of the wood because it does kind of splinter where she chews on the inside of it I was like what if that's irritating her belly um, I also took out her alligator chew, um, which is like a, the dog treat alligator chew that's supposed to be really good for hamsters with their teeth and stuff. Uh, that's gone. I took it out. I also took out her hazel hamster food. She is no longer eating hazel hamster right now. She's only eating oxbow. She's not getting any sunflower seeds, no pumpkin seeds. She's still getting millet, and she's still getting her cheese chew. Um, I did read on Google that it's rare, but sometimes they can, you know, have an allergic reaction to dairy, but I really don't think dairy is what's doing this to her belly. Um, I truly feel like it's either a contact allergy or it's ringworm. I feel like it's only one of the two. Anyway, I don't want this to go too long. I was just letting you guys have kind of like a little update. Um, she's literally just buried in there asleep, but... I will keep you guys updated and if she wakes up I will show you her. Okay guys, she's finally starting to wake up. It's about 9 o'clock at night now. She slept all day long. I think she only woke up like one time and I did not see her scratching a whole lot. She's kind of playing with the paper and burrowing and probably she always drinks right after she wakes up. Usually she's pretty thirsty. Such a good girl. You can't tell she has a rash unless you see her underbelly, which I don't think you can really see it from this angle. You can see her underbelly there a little bit, really close to the bottom. It's really, really pink and hairless where she's been itching at it. Hey guys, okay, so I am here in the hotel of Georgia. My husband and I had a trip that we had to go on um, for a concert that we bought tickets to last year and um, it just so happened to be really bad timing with Moo and her 
um, skin infection. So we actually brought her along and I'm going to show her to you guys now. Um, uh, basically we brought her in her normal tank and I'll show you all of that. But I just wanted to touch base um, since we are traveling with a sick hamster right now um, just to kind of show you guys what I'm doing just so that I can keep up her treatment and show you guys how I'm keeping up her treatment for her skin condition. So I will talk to you guys later. Bye! Yeah, you like that? Good girl! Good girl. Good girl. Just like that. There you go. Now you can reach it. I just cleaned out her tank a little bit because her water had leaked in there from the trip from the drive down. So I just put in some new paper towels and hopefully her antibiotics will keep her from itching too bad, but we're just here in the hotel. And this is pretty much how I traveled with her. I brought her 20 gallon because I wanted her to be as comfortable as possible um, just to lower any stress that she could have. And she seems to be adjusting just fine. Alright, so we're heading home. I have her in the back. Um, as you can see, we brought her a huge tank, which is fine. It's what she was comfortable in. I didn't want to stress her out. So, she is in her igloo sleeping because it's daytime. So, we're about to head back to our home. Bye-bye. Hey guys, okay, so we are going to our third vet visit today. Moo is inside the carrier. Um, I don't know what's going to happen today. I know that she's been on an antibiotic and ivermectin, but those two things aren't working. So we're going to go get a second opinion at a different vet and hopefully get some answers as to why she's losing hair on her stomach and she's so itchy. So we are about to leave now. Okay, guys. So we just got back from our second vet, um, third appointment. Uh, that she's had and he said that um, it is probably not her food that is causing her skin reaction. He believes that it could be ringworm or mites or something to that effect but he said that the ivermectin that she had two days ago just needs a little bit more time in her system. Um, he did prescribe me a new medicine. I don't know if you can see it. Anyway, it looks like this, but it's got to be refrigerated. Um, it's just a little bit in there. He doesn't want me to put the myconazole lotion on her any longer. Um, he also said that I could give her um, her hazel hamster seed back. He does not believe that it is seeds that she's allergic to. Um, so I put a tiny bit of hazel with her oxbow pellets. She hasn't had that in a week now. And I, since I saw no improvement in her itchy or itchiness or any, or her skin inflammation, I saw no improvement and she's been without ox, uh, her hazel hamster for, um, about five days now. And he said that if that were the, what caused it, we would have seen uh, improvement. So he told me I don't have to keep her hazel away from her anymore. So I gave her a little bit more of that back, but none of the pellets, just the seed, um, cause she already has oxbow pellets. He also said that, um, it would probably be safe to give her her alligator chew back since she's been without that for the same amount of time as the food. Um, he said that he doesn't believe it's the alligator chew that's causing it at all. Hopefully in five to seven days, we will see some improvement. I'll definitely keep you guys updated, obviously, and um, keep doing these update clips. But right now, we're just praying that these medicines work because I don't even want to consider what is going to happen if they don't work and she just continues to scratch and get worse. So hopefully, the sweet little girl will be all right, but I'll keep you guys updated. Moo is doing so much better, so I'm going to let you guys see her right now. So we were sleeping, but I wanted to show her for you guys. Good girl. She's a very good girl. She's not aggressive at all, and I'm so glad that all of her treatments didn't taint her.
Bye bye. Okay guys, so as you can see, that is all of the clips that I took over the last two weeks of treating Moo. I hope that this video was helpful to you. Just remember, if there is anything wrong with your hamster, first thing you can do if you have to wait for a vet visit, if you've already tried to make an appointment, is eliminate anything that there could be for allergies. There are lots of other videos on YouTube you can look at. There's Hamster Central and different forums you can go to. But there are a lot of other resources that you can look at for help. The main thing I do want to say is try and be patient. It is a long healing process. It's taken two weeks to get Moo's hair back and her itching to stop. It was agonizing, I'm not going to lie. If you love your little hamster as much as I do, which I'm sure you do, um, it can be really hard to wait. That's probably the hardest part in treatment. But just try your hardest to be patient. Know that it's going to be alright if you're doing everything that you can and it should work out. But just always consult with your vet about everything. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you guys in my next video. Be kind. Bye.